かのように侍は人のねぐらに土足で踏み込むやつがあるかつばき三十郎もうそろそろ四十郎ですが<笑>面白い方ねあなたは。So, I had a discussion with my friend Jay Tilton from my Discord, and he brought up a really good topic. He pointed out how Sanjuro might be the greatest sequel of all time. And he said it was because it does what most sequels don't, and that's stand up on its own without relying on the original film. <laughs> Sanjuro is its own film, and it doesn't need to build off of the original film Yojimbo. It's its own storyline, and it's its own adventure. But if you wanted to really get technical, you could argue that it's not even a sequel. This is because the first draft was written before Yojimbo. It was based on the Shigeru Yamamoto novel. When the film Yojimbo was a really big hit, and the studio wanted Kurosawa to make a sequel, he rewrote the script to make the protagonist a better fighter. Originally, he was smart, but he wasn't the greatest swordsman. Kurosawa still didn't want to direct the sequel, but eventually the studio pressured him into directing it as well. The script ended up being rewritten again, and the final product ended up using only a third of the original script. In the end, it ended up being much more of an action film, and this makes me really curious to see what the original script was. But even the final product doesn't totally seem like a sequel. There's actually little connection to the two films other than the hero's name, Sanjuro. Also, the fact that he's a Ronin. He has a few of the same mannerisms. You know, he's got his famous walk. Also, he says some of the same lines. For example, in both films, he says he's 30 years old going on 40. And both films feature characters that are hiding on the floorboards. That was also a common trope at the time. But it works really well as a sequel, especially compared to most modern sequels that we see now. Usually you end up getting the same movie but worse, which is like a terrible trade off. Also, the plot itself is a lot more complicated than you'd expect. Especially when you compare it to Yojimbo. And that's why whenever I watch this film, it always surprises me. <laughs> it follows a group of young and naive samurai who have discovered corruption in their own town. The Chamberlain, who is also one of the uncles of the samurai, Has told them not to investigate it anymore. Obviously, they ignore this advice and they go to his superior, which is the superintendent. The superintendent has agreed to help them and he's told them to gather and discuss the situation more. And they decide to meet in this empty shrine. And this is all within the intro. And this might be the greatest intro to a protagonist that I've seen in the film. I think it's just genius. 
instead of just giving the main character this grand entrance which you usually get instead all we hear is this big yawn and then out of the shadows Sinjuro appears and he's very chill about it he looks like he's just woken up and I just really love this introduction because it shows that he's dangerous without really showing you he's dangerous. Just the fact that he was sleeping here without any fear of anyone attacking him kind of shows just how much of a badass he is. It also shows that he's a bit more eccentric and he's not really your typical protagonist. So while Sanjuro was supposedly sleeping, he overheard their situation. And he basically tells them that they're being played. He warns them that the superintendent is gonna attack them, and that the Chamberlain was really trying to protect them. And right here also just shows that he's very sharp. He's not really someone you could fool easily. And the next scene just confirms what he just said. There's soldiers approaching them. And this is also another scene that I just like a lot. Just the way the trees look with the black and white. For some reason it seems very dreamlike to me. I just think this whole intro to this movie is just perfect. And I definitely like it more than the intro to the first film. I think this one's a lot more unique. So now they realize that Sanjuro was correct and they're pretty much screwed at this point. And after he gets them out of this, he ends up joining the group because he feels like they're just constantly making bad decisions and they need someone to watch them. And then next we learn that the Chamberlain has been captured. And then the rest of the plot is them just trying to rescue him along with his wife and daughter. I just think this film has a lot of great action and comedy. It also has one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen. But this film is sort of a parody that mocks the traditional samurai in Bushido. And they're kind of played up for comedy. They are seen as gullible and a bit naive, whereas Sinjuro is the ronin, and he pretty much just schools them throughout the film. I think there is definitely more comedy and just lightheartedness in this film compared to the previous one. So because of that, I feel like some people are either going to like this one more or less. But I think that this one also just has a lot more variety of memorable characters. Also, just like with the first film, Nakadai is once again the villain, and of course he squares off against Mifune. And even though I definitely like their showdown at the end, I still do prefer Nakadai's villain from the first film more. I feel like he just looked cooler, the gun, you know, the western town. It was an awesome look. I feel like the landscape in this film is also much more varied. Yojimbo just takes place in this western looking town, whereas this film just has sets and locations that keep changing. But the standout moment for me is just a scene that involves flowers coming down a stream. For some reason, that one just always stays in my memory when I think of this film. <laughs> like with its predecessor, Yojimbo, Sinjaro is a movie that relies heavily on cleverly executed wit to demonstrate the wisdom of the protagonist. <laughs> He's once again just the ultimate male badass. And 
He's very handy in combat, that's obvious, but he's also a guy who's incredibly cunning, and that serves him the most well in taking down his foes. The best example of this is this incredible climactic sequence where he's tied up by his enemy. And even though he's tied up, he's still able to trick them into accidentally alerting his allies to attack. The guy really doesn't even need to lift a finger to get what he wants, and that's why I think he's awesome. No, because I was need to the easy. By placing as great as an emphasis on the mind of a warrior as they do with his physical power. And that's one of the many brilliant traits of the screenplay which was co-penned by Akira Kurosawa. It was also written by Hideo Oguni and Ryozo Kikushima. Another incredibly clever aspect of the script is just the fact that the villains of this, including the superintendent himself, aren't really overwhelmingly intimidating bad guy types. They feel much more like realistic depictions of normal, corrupt people in power. And this is in that they know how to intimidate normal people. But a person like Sinjaro has some still scared shitless. The villains here get a lot of their strength from the massive army that they have by their side. But they're still just as prone to acts of cowardice as they are to acts of cruelty. This means that a lot of the conflict just emerges from the Nine Men and Sinjuro trying to rebel against the superintendent, while also coming to terms with their different personalities. <laughs> The personality of Sanjuro himself is actually similar to an average man. He still shows laziness, like we see him sit back and just yawn really loud. He also has a really big appetite, so he's sort of like Goku. But mix this with his very unorthodox traits, like his wit and just masterful fighting style, the Shiro Mifune really is just excellent at selling both the mythical nature of Sinjaro and also just showing his more amusing normal traits. <laughs> and he's somehow just able to make these contrasting traits live in beautiful harmony together and what you get is just one of the greatest characters in cinema. Even though he's been told by an old lady that he's rescued that he shouldn't resort to violence, he just can't help himself from unleashing his sword on the bad guys, especially when the circumstances call for it. And one of the best scenes in the film involves him taking on a whole swarm of henchmen. This is all the while using precise swordsmanship, all in the span of a single shot. It's an amazing scene, and I think it's just one of many high quality and memorable moments to be found in this film. It serves as yet another extensive example of why Akira Kurosawa is held in such high regard. Speaking of the fight scenes, I think they're all just excellent. I've even heard them being used as an example in some kendo courses. If anyone takes kendo, let me know in the comments if your school uses this film. And yes, spoilers for the ending of the film, though I think it's just such a famous scene that you've probably already seen it, especially if you watch channels like the Nerdy Ronin. And that is the final duel between Mifune and Nakadai. <laughs> ですから、
The scene is just so awesomely over the top. There's supposed to be blood in the scene, but the hose accidentally broke. So it calls an entire explosion of blood to just geyser out. And you can even see that the extras in the back were also shocked by this. I guess Kurosawa really liked it, so he kept it in the film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> で、スタートと言われた時僕は上向いてあげる。向こうはこっちへ抜いてこう入る。それが一瞬彼の方が早かったですね。一瞬のうちの目の前が真っ赤になって血がダーッと。じゃあ本当に見てる人たちは本当に